welcome to each and every one of you as we experience Reverend Dr. Arlene Phelan in the UCM, Universal Church of the Masters Speaker Series. So welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so grateful each and every one of you is here. And we just want to honor your presence, you taking the time out of your busy life to be here, because we are going to explore with our wonderful Reverend Dr. Arlene some amazing dynamics about interdimensionality, interdimensional beings, who we are, and we are who, and who are we. So all of those are going to come into play as we explore this topic together. And I just want to let you know that the UCM Speaker Series is here and available for you in whatever time you would like to look at something. If you've not seen something that you want to see, just go to the recordings and it will be there. So you can never have to miss out on a speaker series. And I just so appreciate, you know, Arlene taking the time and the energy and her with her amazing wisdom to share with us about these important topics. And I want to offer to you that we have a tradition on the speaker series of lighting the candle. Mm -hmm. And the symbol of the candle is simply that light that we can be for each other, that light that we can be for the world, and that light that we can be for ourselves as well. And this candle was made especially for our Arlene. Mm -hmm. And you can see it's got swirlies of interdimensional energies flowing through this heart. And so uh, Janet, to... Jen, Jen. Yes. Honey. yes. Uh, before we start, can we all say a prayer for our April? Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, uh, the, uh, yes. The hospice nurse was here today and said she may be leaving us tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah. the time is getting short. And for those of you, when you yeah. do your, your daily prayers, please put April Lucier in your prayers. Yeah. And Thank we you. just send her all kinds of energy and love. And let's light that candle for her and for Thank all you. of us who know her and love her and for the journey that she's making. Yeah. You know, and that the love is the bridge. The love is the bridge, my friends. And so just honoring that. You know, honoring that love as the bridge and what she can bring and what we can bring to her and what we can bring to each other. So love is a bridge between your heart and mine. Love is the bridge that heals all of humankind. Be here with each other in love and healing light. And we all know and we all can be love's perfect light. So that's for each Thank you. one of you. So our wonderful Reverend Dr. Arlene Phelan needs no introduction, but I will share this with you. She does everything. She's a medium, she's a mystic, she's a psychic, she's a seer, she's a Reiki practitioner, she's a practicer of human Huna healing, which is a very powerful healing dynamic. She is a master in so many different ways. And what Arlene is the best at is being kind, being generous with the wisdom that she receives and offering it to the world, even as she moves into later years, like many of us are, she has not stopped. She still contributes to the world. And so for your healing, for your counseling, for the gift of your heart, Arlene, we give great thanks and we are so happy to welcome you and to welcome all of us on this interdimensional beings, who we are and who are we. Welcome, wonderful Arlene Phelan. 
Thank you. I am honored by your accolades. Um, and just want to say that I'm very moved to have that acknowledgement. And I want to acknowledge each of you because each of you are great, greater than I. And so I'm privileged to be your voice t tonight and know that as I was preparing to speak, <laughs> it's been like I've been on a two-week workshop <laughs> receiving so much information that I literally have been typing this document. I have about four or five different documents I've typed for the information that has come in. And um, and so I I want to say thank you to you all. And the words that I bring to you, you might recognize what dimension you're in if they are thoughts and words that you had been thinking in the last two weeks. <laughs> you all know that you're the one that gave me that thought, that word, and how we can use um, dimensions um, uh, wisely in our lives and how we can recognize when we're in a dimension. We can recognize our beingness in a different way. And so for what you have brought to me to uh, bring into my own consciousness to feed back to you, I thank you. And, um, and so I may repeat myself a few times because it does take me into these different dimensions. Uh, the minute that sometimes I mention one dimension, my goodness, my mind is there. And so we must remember <clears throat> that we are in the physical dimension. And so we have to keep at least one foot here. <laughs> and, um, and yet bring the power of all of these different dimensions that we have come into. So I'm just kind of jumping in, I think. Uh, in all my years of counseling with people, the one of the main questions that they ask me is, who am I and why am I here? And at that moment that they open to the presence of who they are, uh, it's such a wonderful blessing because you can actually feel their presence. You can see the feel the empowerment. And that's what I feel from all of you this evening. I feel the empowerment of you, who you are. And my gosh, I see you, Barbara. <laughs> so wonderful to see you. Uh, and and I feel may I have the words to empower you with the knowledge uh, of your beingness. So as I jump in here, I want to say it was easy for me to open up to these people who have come to me and how easy it is for me to open to you all tonight because I feel your presence. I went to the dictionary just to see what these words actually meant when I saw the title interdimensional being. Um, I was reminded that we're in the first dimension. And in the first dimension, everything is captured in words. So any reference that you want to know is all written down. And I thought that was so awesome because I expected to go to a metaphysical reference. And there it was in the dictionary. So the dictionary said, it tells us we are who we are, what we came here to be. It's being is the state or quality of having existence. It's the totality of all things that exist. And it's defined as a person. So whoopee, I'm a person. <laughs> Sometimes I feel more and less, but it refers to a living being, the most important quality of nature of a thing. So I want you to 
as I say these words, to claim, I am that being, I am a person. The dictionary head leads further to understand that being and consciousness are inseparable. This means at the moment, presence is present. You are what you are is simultaneous. So we don't have to try to be something or try to attain who we are. We know who we are. So being and consciousness are inseparable. They co-emerge, merging together. It means that at the moment present is present, who you is is simultaneous. So it means when you're not present, <laughs> your consciousness is not there. <laughs> there was an exercise we used to do in when I taught at the the um, Christian um, uh, uh, organization in San Francisco, and we would look into each other's eyes, and we would look directly there and say. You're not there because their eyes would veer from us. And so now I know that when I when that veers from there, it's not um it's not a derogatory thing. It just means, oops, they popped off to the different, I'm going to say the metaphysical dimension because that's number two. So uh when you are present, it's the essence of who you are. And it's intrinsic or indispensable quality that serves us in this aspect. So the more present we can be, and, um, you know, Donna, Christian, if you don't mind me reference you right now, you are so totally there. <laughs> you are bringing your presence. <laughs> and it's I, so I just must mention that. Because um, it, it, when you when you're present, you emanate this radiance. Now, sometimes when you're not totally present, you emanate it anyway. But um, your your face and everything just emanates. I am present. I am who I am, and I'm claiming that. So in the dictionary, it even goes further to. Um, pose the uh, question or gives us the question that Shakespeare said, to be or not to be? That's the question. So we, when we look at it in metaphysical terms, we really understand what he meant. It, are we going to be uh, who we are? So the beingness and consciousness and the moment we allow our presence to be present is simultaneously empowering. The more our unity of beingness and our consciousness that makes the presence in the present moment, when we allow ourselves to be fully who we are, is our true self. And I know that all of you know this. And I'm just even saying to you that as I have gone through this material, I feel more of my own presence and I acknowledge that this is who I am. And I just feel so full um, in, in here. Learning the rules and gaining control of expressing our beingness is one of the marks that as we grow older, we do learn and we're able to express that. Sometimes we express it that, oh, I'm just so sensitive. I can't be around certain people. And, you know, I have found that to be true for myself. Uh, sometimes even when I, I have a discussion with someone um, that <clears throat> it turns into less of my presence being there uh, in a higher consciousness way, my blood pressure starts soaring. You know, and uh, so my, my heart starts to go, uh, so it, I'm, I um, am learning to not be in that consciousness. I know you all know this, but I want to say it anyway, <laughs> to emphasize it. 
when we are on each other's consciousness level, when we are being who we are, it's like this. We are in congruency with each other. We understand each other. We, not, we may get new information, but we understand each other because we're on the same consciousness level. If a person operates below you one level or above you, or you function one level before or above them, you're not in congruency and you do not understand one another. It's like, what, what are you talking about? So there, and there may be even discomfort and even anger that comes in. So there's a, a solution to that. You have to be on the same consciousness level. So it's a decision to be or not to be. Now, if you are two steps beneath or two steps above, you think one another's crazy. <laughs> and and it's still it's still possible to communicate, but there is a decision to make. Are you going to be or not be? Are you going to make a sacrifice? It is the person who is most, I'm going to, astute uh, in letting their beingness operate uh, that can go down and pick up the other one, uh, yet it is a decision by both people. Now, what happens if it's three steps beneath and three steps above? Well, we absolutely know each other's crazy, and, and we are prone to just walk away from that because it seems to be too much of a gap. So getting along with each other without conflict is easy when we follow the rule. It's a matter of opening more of our consciousness and agreeing to use the same or similar consciousness. Isn't that wonderful? I could feel that as each person came into the room and brought your consciousness in uh, and how we welcomed each other. Um, Reverend Dr. Childs, when you welcome everybody in, you welcome them with your total beingness. And didn't she invite us to be in who we are? So that's such a wonderful thing. So in this first dimension of consciousness, I'm going to say that we, um, one way we express itself is I am that which I came to be. When I say that, I feel much more empowered. This sounds very mysterious, just as Jesus answered the question when he was asked, who are you? He answered, I am that I am. And everybody was very, very confused. But see, when we understand it in terms of our own consciousness and beingness, then we know that I can say with confidence, I am that which I came to be, my beingness. You know, it's a sacrifice when you are functioning and interacting in the world where they're they're not interacting in their own beingness. They're expense, they're experiencing what I call the FUDs, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Now, the crux of the matter is we came to experience. So we came to experience all levels. So we also came to experience the coarser vibration. And um, it's important to, to say that because I had one client who was trying so hard to follow what I was telling her about being out of the fuds. And she said, oh, I just can't do that. And, and I just felt really bad at that moment to make her feel like she was failing if she, she wasn't living and bringing the essence of who she was at all times. I said, no, you know, we came here to experience and it's your choice. It is, and it's not saying I can't do the other thing. It's saying it's my choice. So how do I feel? 
um, uh, um, why am I here? And so you're there because you're experiencing using the power that that exchange gives. And then it's up to you. You can decide, okay, uh, uh, I don't like this. <laughs> and um, by the way, I do want to say, how do we how do we keep in that higher consciousness? It's simple. It's an on off switch. Now, we can think of that because we know that we're the light and that we're connected all in the light. And what do you do with the light? You turn it on and you turn it off. And so what is that switch? Now, I can't tell you what your switch is, but I can tell you what my switch is. I can tell you what other people is. And I just read more of Jack Swartz, The Path of Action. And he said, you turn the light bulb on or you turn it off. And um, and so I found out it's I like that. And I don't like that. When you say I like that, that empowers you with the essence of who you are. When you say I don't like that it turns the switch off. So kinetically, you can tell in your body that you actually weaken the body. So another way that I'm going to say this is, I want that, or I don't want that. You see, it's a choice, and it's a simple thing to remember. I want that. Whatever you want, you get. The quality of what you want is what you get. And it's training that brain <laughs> to actually do what these little procedures are that brings us into that. Does that make any sense? Okay. When I started to look into dimensions, it also took me into the expression of time and space and that's something that I played a around a lot about. But I wanted to bring you Einstein's quote because Einstein expressed this, this idea, time and space are modes in which we think, not conditions in which we live. So I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. In our experiences in this first dimension, what are we seeking? You know, it's the physical dimension is all made up and we are the ones making it up. It's a made up term um, for giving us some feeling of equilibrium, some measure of confidence that we know where we are, that we can measure where we are in this dimension. So we seek some kind of measure to have confidence that shows us that we're where we are when we want to be, to do what we want to do, and to be with those that we want to be with. So we, we might have a, a watch. I, I don't use those for 40 years now, but and I seem to, to show up okay sometimes, so it's erratic. But who we are uh, and who we want to be is rather a timing in the physical now, when you step into the metaphysical, you can rather bend that time and space because it is, it, um, it's a made-up measurement. And when you learn that, then you can work with it in a different framework. So there's a framework of interdimensional being, and the operating rules for each dimension carries beingness in the first level of what interaction that makes everything work. And so I want to I'll use my fingers in, in uh, describing the dimensions because we all know that scientists say we're, we have, we're in third dimension or maybe fourth that they can't measure and then five. So I'm going to, uh, and some say uh, there is 11, but they don't know how to measure them. So I want to measure them tonight and work with you on that level. And um, and so I'm going to use the fingers. The first finger is the first dimension. And the first dimension is everything is separate. Now, 
it's very convenient in the first dimension because we can have fun. You can throw a ball. I can catch it. Uh, I can talk and you can listen or you can talk and you can teach me things. It's very important because if you're a surgeon, you do not want to be in oneness with the patient or the patient doesn't want to be in oneness with the doctor, right? I know they give you sleepy medication, but, but it's convenient. So when we tell a person, oh, remember that we're one in oneness. No, in the first dimension, it demands that we are separate. And so we can be a mirror to one another. I have a twin sister. And so we were always looking into each other's face. We were always measuring. I, I shouldn't say we. She would measure me to death. She'd take a flashlight and look in my eyes and measure the, our necks, how long our necks are, to see the differences. And so this is what we are learning, what the differences are, and we're interacting. And why are we doing that in this dimension? Well, in the physical dimension, we are seeking permanence. Well, when you're in the second dimension, you, you say, oh, isn't that silly? <laughs> because this is temporal here. And who we are is this light being that is going to shut the body at one point. So, but this is very important in that. So we are gaining expertise in that. Um, and so when we're interacting with other people, remember that that's one of the expertise that we are doing. Two, this is the psychic. Everything is connected. So, you know, when I was looking there, it looked like, you remember those tinker toys, how they stick the, the sticks in together? Everything is connected. When you use the first dimension and the second one together, then you're <laughs> actually um, uh, connecting. So you it's like calling on the telephone. And you don't see the person, but you're talking electronically. Uh, so our spirits are in connection with each other. I told you, I felt and had was inspir inspired to take this um, talk in 16 different directions because I could feel the communication. So everything be can be communicated with. Now, when you go deeper into the, the second dimension, everything, um, we're, we're in the first dimension, there's a beginning and an ending. And as we greeted each other, we were very much in the physical one. Well, some of us, you know, were interacting on the second level to know we've been in contact with each other, right? But in the second, there's no beginning and there's no ending. I really want you to get that because everything in time and space is together. I've already given this talk. You have already heard it. And as we go deeper into the knowledge and using the second dimension, then we, we, um, we all time and space is together. So when we want to access information, it's not the fact that we have to uh, think about it. It's there for us. Make sense? The third dimension. Now, the third is so interesting, and we use that so often because everything has meaning in this dimension. And we will say, what does it mean? So if we physically observe somebody and we are using third dimension, we'd say, ah, what does that mean? Ah, Annie's wearing that teal covered uh, hat. What does that mean? That means it brings healing to her. Roger Corliss called me up one day. I had just left his house an hour before and said, Arlene, you left something at my house. What do you think that means? So it's like, oh, I, I'm not sure about that. But, oh, I've heard that if you leave something, it means you want to return. And he said to me, no, I don't think it means that at all. I think it means that I... I want to be a UCM minister. And it's like, what? How did he get that out of it? He was very much in the third dimension. The pen I left behind said UCM. 
on it. <laughs> and he said, all my life I've wanted to be a minister. And this is the sign to me that I want. You know, how often do we see a 1111 and we'll say, that's a sign. And so it's a sign. Someone was giving healing to me once and I, I could feel their energy, which I've always had such a high energy. I didn't feel other people's energies. And so afterwards, I said, what did you do? She said, well, I was raised in an incontinent. And she said, they taught me how to use symbols. So she told me the symbols that she just drew over my head. And I could feel this enormous. So you put whatever beliefs and everything into the symbol, and the symbol does the work. Isn't that interesting? Okay, and then four. <laughs> I have to learn where four is. <laughs> Everything is oneness. Now, this is where we have, uh, I, say, I say the second dimension and the fourth come into being. But the difference in fourth is we merge into each other. Now, when you're in the fourth dimension, you don't know it because you're involved in it. When you are looking at clouds in shaman training, <laughs> our teacher would say, go into the cloud, become the cloud. And then you move the cloud because you are the cloud. Now, how do we do that? We do it all the time. Look at the sunset. When you see a sunset, you immediately, as the calmness hits you, merge into that. And so you are the energy into that. When we are together with one another and we are used to merging with one another. Oh, my goodness. There is such a dynamic example. One of Ron's friends came into the house when he wasn't there. He just bought this new motorcycle. And he said, Oh, this is so wonderful. I merged with the motorcycle. And he described how he was one with his motorcycle. And I was thinking, oh, my goodness, I hope you had conscience of mind <laughs> to drive this motorcycle rather than become it. Let the motorcycle become you. He gave me this wonderful description of what it means to merge. Now, in this field of oneness, in merging, you must choose where you want to merge because you can merge into density and that way be a part of the, um, the fuzz that's going on. So these are levels of consciousness that you allow yourself to be in. Okay, so that's fourth dimension. Now, the fifth dimension to me is the great playground. Because the this is where imagination takes over. I call this the dream state. When Serge King teaches this, he teaches this uh, dream state is up here with the sim symbology. But I found it to be in daytime. This is where imagination happens in the moment. Oh, or uh, a daydream. Now, it goes into our Alterian cycle because every 150, 190 minutes of our, uh, our cycle, we go into this natural state where in this, in this level, this is where we, there are possibilities that we don't know anything about. And so this is where inventions are made. And this is where in the daytime dreaming, it's important. So it's in the, the rhythms. You can just pause for a moment because your body goes into a natural state of relaxation, which allows you to connect to who you are. It goes into power naps for those who are professional and don't know anything about metaphysics. And then it also goes into nighttime dreaming. I use nighttime dreaming and have since I was a child because I create in the dream state and then I uh, and work out my problems in the daytime. 
I live it. In old time Hawaii, they would prepare to go into um, the nighttime where they live their life. And in the daytime, they work it out in the physical. So it's a different way of looking at things, isn't it? In the dimension. Then in the seventh, in the, these are qualities, um, and there are nuances. If you will read the scientific information about it, you'll find that the scientific information says these are fields that they can't quite um, measure. Uh, but I know mathematically with numerology what this is. In the sixth dimension is where you utilize the qualities of love and a service because we're learning all of these different things, how to use them. So using the sixth one, you can utilize them with this. I forgot to mention this one. When you have your thumb here, your thumb is the magic. And so, you know, when you met, when you see meditation like this, with the thumb and the first finger, you are matching the first dimension with the magic. The you when it's like this, when you're meditating, it's matching the second dimension. Third, and this. So the fifth dimension can uh, can handle can move in between and utilize them. Now, when you go into the qualities of our beingness and Excuse how much me. consciousness. My yep. wonderful Arlene, can you show those up in the camera? I don't believe we could see all of the symbols. Oh, okay. Um, so this is first dimension, if I can see it in my own thing here, the more I move the finger, the more I don't see it. <laughs> uh, okay, I can see it over here. Okay, so the, the one one dimension, and you put your thumb here, and you, you have seen, oops, okay, you have seen in meditation where the thumb and the first fingers together, the thumb and the second, thumb and the third, and the fourth. And I'm going to say that it's a good way to remind yourself where you are. What and what skill are you using right now? Uh, because the older that I get, the more I try to let the systems, the dimensions work for me. And uh, because I'm not physically able to, okay, do this all in the separateness. Not only that, as we are uh, working in the consciousness level of the earth, we are, uh, this is our chance to go into service. So this is going into the sixth one. Now, I'm going to say that when you're using the both hands together, you would be using both hands in your meditation or uh, at your own. So, so this would be the sixth dimension. Not really. I'm not sure what that would be, but I'm going to put it with the seventh because this finger here is the seventh dimension. And this is the shaman's playground. This is where you learn to use all levels of consciousness and all levels of, um, of beingness. Eight is where you get the power and use the power in them all. So you can use it with both hands and bring it into another dimension because by this time that you are in service, six is in service and it's bringing service to all of these different men. It's bringing your love, it's bringing your teaching, it's bringing your um, ability to uh, care for others, to serve others and to be served. This is a very special time, you know, Annie, for people to, you allow people to serve you. This is a, a time for that because you've been out there busy, busy, busy. And so uh, I'm going to say, remind yourself that, that you're in service. You're allowing someone to serve you and to help to heal you, uh, to make you feel more comfortable. Does that make any sense? Okay. 
So then you go into the ninth dimension. And the ninth dimension is where you are completing all of these different levels of, of conquering them because we are learning to function in all of these different levels. Yeah. So my my thing that I do is I remind myself which dimension I'm using. Oh, that's third, that's fourth, that's fifth, because it gives me empowerment. And you see, one of the sim symbolic um, things that you can do is you... Um, you say you say what it is. Hannah Kruger used to teach that way. She she was ninety two when I uh, went to one of her classes. She talked ninety miles an hour. She said, "I don't have time to live much longer, so I have to talk fast." And she would tell them all of the different herbs to use. She was so amazing. So one of the person said uh, it was using uh, something like mistletoe. And, and he said, I don't have any. And so she looked back at him and grabbed the pen, oh, uh, grabbed the pen off the desk and thrust it in his hand and said, say it is. Say it is. Because that works. Say it is if you do not have it. Have a picture of it. You do not have to have the herb. When I take vitamins, sometimes I will look at my pill and tell it what it's supposed to be doing for me. Because I don't know. I don't have to buy a special one or something. But I'll just say it is. I got well in one week when I went to Hawaii and they gave me all these pills to take. Because I said, say it is. And do the work of it. What you say it is, it is. Does that make any sense at all? I bet all of you have used that at one time or another. And then going to the ninth is where you use the wisdom. And I'm going to say all of you that I'm looking at today are in your wisdom cycle. That you are at the time to allow that wisdom to come through. Number 10 is when you have finished it all. And you can shuck off that body. And that's 10. So you can clasp your hand. You can say, "This I know what this world is about. I know what my placement is in it. And I, um, you can be satisfied in yourself. I say, what else do you need to know? You see, that's using, that's using to, oh, I have to use this hand. That's using to, when you really want to know what is it that I really need to know right now, and that brings you into that beingness of who you are. I guess there is one more thing for me to say. George Walker Bush, you all know, was president of the United States. And George Walker Bush told the people who we are and why we are here. I remind myself every once in a while what he said, because it was so awesome. He said, we are sparks of light. We are points of light. And we came here to do good. And he set up a program. And so did the Queen of England, of the monarch, or, uh, put in both countries. And they still have an organization that is bringing that into being. I'm trying to, yeah. It, he established the Points of Life Initiative. He said the growth and magnetism, magnification of Points of Life must now become an American mission. The president believed in the readings and ability of every individual and every institution in America to initiate action as points of light. He said that meaningful one-on-one -on -one engagement in the lives of others is now required to overcome 
our most serious national problems. The growth and magnification of points of life must now become an American mission. He named three strategies. One, claim problems as your own. Isn't this wonderful for us? The president's call for action calls for all Americans and all institutions, large and small, to make service of Central Valley value in our daily lives and work. Two, one-to-one -one problem solving. Every individual should connect with his or her institution, business, professional firms, the media, labor, education, religion, civic groups, associations of all kinds, and not-for-profit service organization, and engage in the lives of others in need on a one-to-one -one basis. He said the goals, identify, enlarge, and replicate what is working, link servers to needs, give recognition and awards, discover and encourage new leaders, New leaders. Sounds like a formula for us, doesn't it? His conclusion is this. The President's Service Initiative focuses on the most critical domestic challenges facing the nation today. These problems were long in coming and cannot be solved overnight. But if each one of us and each institution responds to the President's call to engage one-to-one -one in the life of another person in need. This initi initiative will be the most comprehensive and inclusive movement of our time. This movement can dramatically reverse negative trends on many fronts and ensure the fulfillment of the points of light. So in this conclusion, I want to emphasize that I never thought I would be quoting one of the American presidents. But I remember at the time when he said, we are points of life, light. His challenge, as long as millions of Americans are illiterate, dropouts, drug users, pregnant teens, delinquents, or suicidal young people, AIDS victims, and among the homeless and hungry, America has not yet fulfilled its promise. Our challenge is to overcome the disintegration of communities, large and small. While the government's role is critical, government cannot overcome the challenge alone. I don't believe in mixing church and state, but this man went to church. <laughs> and in this program that he outlined, he put different words into the message that I want to convey to you tonight, that we are points of light. And as we allow our own consciousness to evolve, then we will be those points of light. I thought I was going to give a lot of time for questions, but I haven't too much. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, you have. You've got another whole hour, honey. Oh, okay. Oh, then yes, I, yes, I'm, yes. I'm just absolutely. on time. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. So I, I want to open it up for interactions with people. And for anything that I have uh, brought forward to you or anything that you uh, want to, that, that comes into your head. Well, I missed um, the level eight. Could okay. You could you, would you mind clarifying that for me? Not at all. Uh, let me even get to what my memory is on level eight. It, level eight is about using power. And so it's in all levels of consciousness where you get your power from. So if you are using all of your beingness and your consciousness will say a higher uh, rate of consciousness, where, love, where you feel love and loving, then you're going to be uh, using the higher consciousness power. It gives you power to manifest 
especially in the first um, level, uh, it, it gives you power to um, be wealthy, to be healthy, to uh, to manifest that which you uh, want to manifest. Um, and, and it gives you the power to do that in all of these different levels. So if you are not getting what you want in one level, you go to the next level and, and use the power of that level. So when, if you're not manifesting what you think you want to have, you can look at several different ways. One, one you may have a priority of a different um, uh, thing that you are working with, and you're getting your power maybe in a negative way than uh, the, the great power source that you are as a, a enlightened being. But you could put it into um, a statue. You could put it, some people put it in a cross. Some some of my friends in Hawaii use shells and they use a sandy box and they say this represents this thing, this represents another. And they just leave it there and sometimes they go and don't, don't just move it. So that is uh, one level of doing the power and letting the, the power unfold uh, in a different dimension. Does that make any sense to you, Joan? Yes, thank you. And then the, the other thing, you mentioned the book by Jack Schwartz, is that yes. correct? And what was the name of the book? The Path of Action. The Oh, The Path of Action. Okay, let me hold it up here somewhere. Okay, thank you. Oh, that's, yep. I'm not doing it. I've so enjoyed your talk. It's, and Donna um, has, I'm sorry, complete Joan, I'm sorry. I've so enjoyed her talk. It's just been a breath of fresh air. It's wonderful. I love Thank it. Thank you. Thank and you. Donna has her I'm hand glad, up. I'm glad I could speak your words for you. Mm -hmm. You're the one that brought it forward. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're beautiful. Yeah. I just want you to know that. Thank you. Who else had their hand up? Donna. Hi, Arlene. Hi, um, Donna. Hi, Arlene. I, I totally enjoyed listening to you, but I have to admit that I'm fairly uneducated in the dimensions. So a lot yes. of what you were talking about was over my head. So um, that book that you mentioned, is that recommended as a resource to help me more understand this concept? Um, I have a book to recommend for you. Uh it's called Hawaiian Shamanism, and it um, it gives all of the dimensions in here on page 90, uh, operating princi principles to create reality, and um, although it's uh, in verbiage of Hawaiian Shamanism, it uh, gives you all of the dimensions, and um, especially that chapter on uh, mana mano, uh, ho o mana mana. Uh, it, it, it's um, the verbiage is like in be having power, and it's the ability to create realities out of reality okay. when you get over here and using your full consciousness. So, putting no, your hand in together yes. you know, is, is a wonderful thing. Uh, it's called Hawaiian Shamanism Secrets of the Modern Shaman. And who's the author? Uh, Reverend Arlene Phelan. Yes. Oh, <laughs> it's an amazing book. And it's so funny because I was going to mention it at the end of this, but you've already mentioned it, so that's Thank perfect. You. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm, I'm sure it's still um, available. Yes. Yes, it's on Amazon. I just okay. got one for a friend. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Um, and I have to say that you know, since I wrote this book oh, about six years ago, I um, I learned so much more from all of the information coming into me to know that what I was actually working with was dimensions, and um, and so I've been reinterpreting everything 
and realizing that, oh, I have written that in this book. <laughs> uh, and um, and I, we call them levels of reality and what they actually are dimensions. And one of the reasons I know they're dimension is I had an experience in meditation when I was a newbie in UCM. I had already uh, taken med- mediumship classes and I, I did meditation, you know, the kind that was controlling what your thoughts are, not, you know, going off on trips or anything. So uh, someone invited me to this group and they said, well, you better call the teacher because you might not be advanced enough to come. So I said, okay. So I called and then they let me come. And the, one of the first thing they did was this meditation and guided meditation. And and the first thing the, the guide said is, see the yellow rose. And I'm looking for this yellow rose and it's all black. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I can't do this. She's right. <laughs> and the, she's walking on down the path. See this, see that, the other. And I can't see anything. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, I just felt really restricted. And I just felt someone was holding me. And uh, so I had enough presence of mind. This is what we always, always should do, Donna is to ask questions. So, well, where am I? What's happening? What does this mean? You know, go through all the, the levels of, of, of realities and the dimensions, and you'll get an answer. So all of a sudden, this bright light comes on, and I see me, who was not clairvoyant at all, sees this picture. And this picture uh, I can see there is this bright light. Well, when I look over here, this is like a shaft, like uh, the um, stem of the fl- uh, flower. But I, as I was being revealed to me, as I kept asking questions, what am I looking at? And I could see the little membrane on the inside. The outside was green. This is, and this little dot or glob, I'm going to call it, in the middle. You know what a Hershey chalk it is when you take the, the tin foil off of it. You see that little curl on top. This is this little golden being in there and this big eye looking up. And I went, that's me. So I really got it, that's me. But, and I thought, well, I really overshot that one, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so I was a little chuckling there. But so I looked around and I saw other stems. And then I looked up and I saw the bottom of this rose blossom that was kind of whitish. Well, it wasn't yellow, but it was there. And so I really got it that I am in the middle of this bouquet, but I didn't really realize it until I was preparing for this, that it was showing me the dimensions. Mm -hmm. I was experiencing the dimension within that meditation. So it wasn't about um, could I see it or not, uh, or this and that, the other. But as you learn when you are going to to say, what does that mean? And, you know, um, go always going into the second dimension with your um, psychic and ask the question, what is one thing I really need to know about this right now? So as you're going through that, Donna, ask that question of yourself. <laughs> what is it I really need to know about that? And by the way, that works when you're having problems with people. Yeah. What does that person really need from me right now? Beautiful. Back back off. Uh, yeah. I, I've always been so quick-tempered all my life. And I was always the champion fighter for my twin. You know, I would physically go out and fight people to defend my weak little twin sister, who was not really weak <laughs> at all. <laughs> but um, but I was quick-tempered, so I really had to take that deep breath. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. So what I, do they need? What do they need? That's a powerful yes. question. Well, what do I need from them? What do I need from them? Right. Because if I'm in this position, uh, and I I had this one terrible time in Hawaii, 
this woman made me wrong every time I turned myself around. And I did nothing to this woman. And I did the best thing I could to get back in her good grace. She would not let me be right. And, and I knew I was right. So I just had to back off and say, okay, I, I may never be right in her eyes. And so stop trying to prove that you're good enough, that you're right enough, and all of that. So, so I learned to back up into a different dimension. You know that five years later, I met her, met her again in Hawaii, and she was just sweet as pie to me, and left all of that go. Yeah. Well, I was really happy because those encounters are not easy yeah. to deal with, yet they're something that we must experience on both ends. Beautifully well, said. And Corky, say. Corky had some. She had her hand up. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, Arlene, if you could go through the so the, the first dimension, the second dimension, because it, it I couldn't, and then you were doing some other hand stuff because okay. you've got it. It's oh, you, you got can't it see it. where your face is, so I can so I can see it. Oh, yeah. oh, that's right. Here we are. Okay, so the first dimension we're separate, and so you and I are separate. And no. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, we are. And you see, um, it's wonderful you and Dottie are separate because you have a relationship and you can look into each other's eyes. When you're not separate, you can't look into each other's eyes. Well, okay, okay. I accept that right? then. You got that? <laughs> yeah, and, I got it. And when you touch, you're touching yourself <laughs> in the second dimension. You're, uh, But if you use one and two together, then what you're doing is connecting put your put so your hand up like that that means you can connect with Dottie when she's not there right yeah. So she can, yeah, yeah you can be at the store and you'll have a thought of her right yeah what does she want me to get pick up from the store exactly exactly you <laughs> it, sometimes it'll come in with uh oh here's butter i need to do that or oh you know it, it doesn't matter how it happens but it is important for you to learn how it happens with you because you're different from anyone else and you so you may not be functioning in the second one but you might be in the third because it represents you know it's like if a, a person is tying a shoestring it doesn't mean that the shoestring is loose but it it's a symbol that you want to tighten things up in your life you see it has a different meaning a correlation and so uh you can use that in various ways. You got your hand up, Dan. Okay. Or did that answer your question? Thank you. Jan, did you? I think you need to go into the fourth dimension, though, because that's merging. And see, this is what you can do. You do with Dottie, you merge. And this is when you can sit for hours and not talk to one another. And... Um, and, and there's just the satisfaction of it, but it's not something that you can say, oh, I'm merged. No, because you're in oneness and you feel whole. So I'm going to say you sense it by how you feel whole. And sometimes it's a thought of a person that, and those of us who are maybe spend more alone time, uh, recognize that because you'll have the thought of a person and uh, a day that that day or two days later someone calls you and sometimes I don't get to my phone and I'll hear the message and it's the person who I had been thinking about yes. so we, oh, that, yeah yeah that happens you are yeah. actually but it's important to know you're actually in communication now let's go with those who have passed on and I'm going to say even with April who is in making her transition right now. Uh, each of us have a little different experience with her because you may be experiencing uh, as a part of the separation and have been part of making the ritual for her departing, uh, for her physical removal uh, from the earth plane. On the second level, you're in you in the beginning you're in contact with her you you've been in contact you have thoughts of her you have memories that are coming up and and then when you go full blown in in number 2 
you have um you you're connected and they and that when you go deeper goes directly into number four yeah number four uh that goes into uh your oneness with them so be aware that um uh, the possibilities and what happens to you you uh, just in my meditation there i had no idea that i had the capability of being inside that 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 bouquet or in that stem that i was capable yes chen li uh, eileen i just want to acknowledge your message about april um been reiki trained amazing yes. dimension and glenn just reverend glenn we all know who has transitioned just sent through the Reiki message to tell Dottie he's on the other side waiting. So that's the message for all. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, I meant to mention those on the other side because we are spiritualists and we know that there is no separation in death in the second level and in the third level and in the fourth level also. And so you bring all of those qualities together, and uh, we we learn from Glenn, um, and we learn from other people. Sometimes you don't know who you're learning from. And I'm going to say, this is what's hard, um, quirky, in the second level, that's why sometimes it's so hard. We don't know what our own thought is. We have so many people uh, coming bombarded. I haven't learned, you know, uh, to know which one of you were coming into me when I was planning this session here. Uh, I, I, I do know some, but I guess I'm not curious enough to say, who is this? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what is this thought? No, I just kind of welcome them. The same thing when I wrote the book, um, I channeled so many of the different kahuna uh, that gave me information on this. It was such a blessing. And there, there's one chapter about uh, the spiritualism of Hawaii. They don't really talk about it in terms that we do as spiritualists, but um, but they they practice it and they believe it and um, and they use it. So thank you, Chen Li. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chen Li. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm actually saying thank you to Glenn. He's the one who sent the message. <laughs> but you were our deliverer. Yeah, you. you were our deliverer. I am just honey. the deliverer. <laughs> you are the deliverer. So thank you, Chen, for being the yeah. bridge. Thank you. Uh, I want to say that uh, Glenn has often been around me uh, because I met him when um, Dolly Boom was in charge of a panel that had Glenn on it and somebody else that fell through. So Dottie invited me to be a part of that panel. And so I was so amazed when I met him. And, you know, when you do meet a person in that spiritual setting, you can, you can meet them just one time. And, you know, you've spent lifetimes with them. When you go into the second dimension, you know that. And so you you pick up information or you have that sense of satisfaction, I'm going to say, a, a sense of wholeness. And I've received that from each one of you tonight. So uh, be aware of, of, of that. And there's so many people that I know of right now who are preparing to make their transition. And they... Um, uh, they will come to you. And sometimes there, there's so many, I don't recognize them, but I just know it's wonderful. Yeah, You can accept them on different levels. And the memories that are triggered are just wonderful. Absolutely. Could I have another question? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. So I've heard several people talk about the fact they feel that uh, the population in planet Earth or the, or the U.S., I'm not clear on that, is moving into the fifth dimension. And I'm, I'm wondering if, if there's any, if you feel any movement about that and 
if that means what that means, if anything. Uh, and it's uh, according to which uh, level that you're looking at it, uh, Joan. Um, if you look at it, that we are beings who have created this third dimension and the fourth dimension. So we have all of these dimensions that we're already uh, working with. Um, then, and we're the ones that created this planet. So we're part, if if you cannot accept or see the from the first level that uh, limitation, uh, oh, I couldn't possibly have done that because I've got this body and I have limitations. But the spirit that we are, the light that we are, has created this planet for um, uh, for us to experience. And so at one point or another, we're not going to need the planet. We may go on and we may make other planets. Uh, I'm not sure what the whole design plan is. I just know that on this planet, we are experiencing. And uh, when people say that to me, I say, oh, so you're planning to... Uh, 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 go on to an etheric plane, uh, if you will, uh, which scares a lot of people because in the physical form, the whole thing is about permanence. We make it appear that it is a permanent planet. Terra firma is solid. Well, it's not. You know, for millions of years, we've got all this uh, volcano activity underground that is looming up. You have all, scientifically, people are trying to uh, capture what's happening here. And so this is one of the important questions that we ask. So if we stay in the physical, then we will look at uh, what people are saying to you that, oh, these things are changing. Yes, our atmosphere is changing. Uh, I would say by the time that happens, it's not going to be a boom and the planet bursts into fifth dimension, I feel. But it's just what I feel. What is it that you feel? Well, I just feel that <clears throat> it's a, a way of saying that the overall consciousness, it, it's just like uh, our poverty level has improved uh, the, there are fewer desperately impoverished people on the planet now than there were 50 years ago. So there's been a movement away from extreme poverty, even though there's still a lot of poverty. So the way I see it is there's a gradual movement from the third dimension into a more spiritual uh, dimension and, and that that will also be a gradual thing as we become more aware of planet Earth and um, of what the um, opportunities and limitations are. So you're so, equating that the third dimension is not as spiritual as the other dimensions. Well, I guess I am, yeah. Okay. Uh, I just wonder, you know, how you're labeling it. I, and, I think uh, we're labeling it two different ways. I mean, I just want to mm -hmm. interject here for a minute. Right. I think what you mean by the third dimension, Joan, is actually the first dimension in Arlene's. Would that be accurate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It Perhaps. would be more, I think it would be more like moving into the second, yeah. because that's metaphysical. Yeah. And the metaphysical is more of what we call spiritual. Does that make any sense? Uh, okay. uh, and so it's a, a level of consciousness, let's say. Um, <clears throat> we can open up in consciousness in the first dimension. I think this is why we're struggling so much in the physical, um, <clears throat> because we're working it out. But we can, we can, we do bring the higher consciousness level into the physical. So it's like what George Walker Bush said. He he saw the physical third dimension as the I could see it as in the sky when he said points of light uh, in the sky and then brought it down into the bodies of people. So he was actually talking about individuals 
carrying for and carrying it into the next level of consciousness. So um, uh, I can see that at this moment, when we are having so many different levels of consciousness at this time, we have the very grossest at the time because we are expanding in consciousness. And so people are going up and down in consciousness moment by moment. So it's not a level of this, we're moving up here and higher and higher and higher in consciousness. What we are is one moment we may be screaming and yelling like an idiot over something and then, oh, you catch yourself because it there's such a wave of consciousness going on. I was going to recommend a book that is uh, Color, Sound, and Vibration by um, William David, and it it uh, it talks about this the synergy level of consciousness. He actually uh, it's one of the few books I've read that tells us what's actually happening in this consciousness level. Now I'm not sure that it will move what the planet is doing um, or not, uh, but I appreciate your thoughts about it because that brings me into a little different uh, viewpoint. And I'll take that into dream time tonight, Joan, Beautiful. to see what happens. And who is Beautiful. the author of this book? Um, William David. Oh, okay. And it says color, uh, sound, and vibration. And it it shows you uh, us as a universe uh, and how we have incomplete actions and as we grow in through our lifetimes how we go back and pick them up and that's what i think we're doing when we take this right hand of consciousness and integrate it into the levels of, um, of dimensions we are going back and picking up things that we need to complete from other lifetimes i just want to tell you the points of light thing reminded me that one of the very first meditations on New Year's Eve morning, that one that, that we got up at, at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. and did, I had the uh, impress, I saw points of light all over the world, mm -hmm. including across very few, but some points of light across Russia. Mm -hmm. And I, <clears throat> I thought, Joan, you must be demented in seeing things. Mm -mm. But later I met a lady who had been in Russia at that time doing that meditation. And there were people in Russia, even, even though it was inconceivable to us at that time that anybody would be doing that. There were people in Russia doing that meditation at that time. Beautiful. <laughs> And you have a couple of more questions coming. You are so popular, Arlene. So okay. Dahlia, we'll go to Dahlia next, and then we'll go to Donna. Hi, okay, Donna. Thank you. Uh, so there's a couple things. One is um, I'm really interested in what you were saying about merging. Um, I have a note that s says for the fourth dimension to choose where to merge or what yes. to merge with. And then um, the other aspect was from the first dimension, we're moving up and down with the consciousness levels. Like if you go lower then you're, <clears throat> you're gonna have that sacrifice of going with a coarser vibration. So th that way of explaining these was really interesting to me and uh the question i have two questions but this first one is um it, it, it so are we operating off of the first and fourth dimension together with merging and shifting levels of consciousness or are those two different things well it's interesting the way that you pose that because i'm looking at how do you do that I kind of know how I do it sometimes. Uh, but the first one is you're separate. 
And um, and so it is would be the idea if you're merging into oneness with something that you're actually, um, it, I'm not sure how it happens in the first dimension, I'm going to say, but it's only when you're coming out of the merging is that you have realization that you have just merged. That make any sense? So merging, um, well, it's like looking into a sunset, okay? When you kind of get lost in that sunset, you have merged with it. When you are merged, you don't know the sensation of merging, but you may experience a wholeness. And uh, and it's the same thing if you actually merge with another person uh, consciously, um, because when you're using it in the first dimension, um, you know, I'm going to use uh, Dr. Childs, if you uh, allow me. Um, <laughs> you're a wonderful person to merge with, <laughs> because it's a high, you're a high vibration, number one, and you welcome. You, you welcome everyone. And so when you welcome everyone, everyone is like, I'm going to step up to the plate here, you know. And um, so I'm sure there's times in your life that not everybody has come to you on the same level, but it's something that you have learned to hold that vibration and merge. Now, if you merge with somebody who is, I'm going to say, uh, is having um, some kind of a, a fit, um, a fear, um, a low vibration, and you merge with them without them coming up in vibration and you coming up in vibration, you're going to go into that lower vibration and merge together. Just as I gave the example of the young man who merged with his his motorcycle, I wouldn't think of merging with my, my uh, motorcycle, but it was a wonderful vibration for him to do that. And so he was able to function and do that. So that merging performed a function. The merging that you are talking about hasn't really been pinpointed, but that may be an example for you of what a lower vibration would do. Or maybe it's when you go out with a, a group of people and they're all drinking. And uh, sometimes when you uh, have all that drinking, a lot of low entities come in and you have it. So you have a lot of low vibrations coming in. You merge with a the person, then you can feel the effects of their drinking on you. Does that make any sense? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you. Okay. And, okay. and also it's a great motivator uh, to not merge or go down a consciousness level like that unless yeah. you really need to for some reason, <laughs> you know, because it's so, so there's Yes, this tells you where the skills of being in the first level in separateness is important. Um, there is, there's different ways that we put up a shield or uh, just say, no, uh, I don't want that. Um, sometimes I just move the energy, moving my hands, you know, it's like away. Uh, or maybe I cut, cut it with my hand and then move it away, move it away. Um, uh, so there's a different ways that you yourself will prevent that from happening and secure the separateness that you have. Um, you may choose at a different time or choose to, um, send a symbol. Knowing Reiki is a wonderful thing to send a Reiki symbol. Um, a lot of people don't want to use the cross or something like that, uh, or even white light. I, I went with a person who uh, said, don't, don't use the white light. In fact, he wanted to use a black light because it was comforting to him. And so I was glad to know that ahead of time. But you may... Uh, if the person is saying, come and play with me in the density, uh, then that's, that's, it. then you do it and you say, oh, I was playing in density. That's what it feels like. Do I want to do that again? 
And so you may spend some time in there. And, and many times we do that with relationships. So know why you're there. There, there was a different um, uh, part of your question, wasn't there, Dahlia? Yes, thank you. There's one last thing. And uh, okay, it's something you were saying about the 10th dimension. Uh, you were talking about, I believe, like us eventually not having bodies. And then yes. I wrote down uh, what the world is. Like we know, we know what the world is and our placement. And um, wow, I was interpreting that statement is that when that has occurred, like we can really safely make a transition and know that we're fulfilled. Um, I I just want to see if uh, what you think of that and like if you can say one or two more things for me because I. I just think that that's such a fascinating uh, perspective. Uh, William James talks about that in his book, uh, in the and I think it's around the last part of the book. Um, and um, it's when you move from this earthly dimension and you've finished all of your cycles that you want to. And I'm going to say that's number nine because people who are in the nine cycle are going in, it may not be their last lifetime here, but they're close, they're cleaning up, they're a completing unfinished um, um, uh, things in their uh, in past lifetime and this lifetime. So you're clear to go on. And once you have reached that level, it goes into the 10. He talks about, himself going into as a um, non-physical entity that is working for the earth plane. And so it goes into the hierarchies. Um, uh, Fitzgerald in his book uh, mentions something about the uh, spheres and the hierarchy. He doesn't go into it too deeply, but um, you have to go intuitively or go and look at other um material on it um so i'm going to say that's something that you might explore uh what it means to you because there's um there's a website that is um uh, 62 lessons in mysticism or something like that i ran into it about seven or eight years ago and he's a wonderful mystic and so he gives free lessons up to a certain point. And so he talks about the higher realms. And um, so you might explore something like that. Uh, Google it and just make sure that the site that you're in, you feel really comfortable with. Because there's some wonderful sites that, and his, I know, um, the, myst the mystics, um, who have been mystics for a long time in the Western world know each other. And so in that site, he talks about other people and what they are doing. Uh, it kind of, uh, since I was uh, born with two very brilliant sisters, I like to hang out with people who are brilliant. <laughs> and they, they seem to know a lot. So you might investigate those things. But you might investigate from your own soul. Because your own soul knows. And what is it important for you to know right now about that? And that's the information that you can use. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you for and, uh, clarifying. I appreciate okay. it. And Donna, did you have something else? Oh, okay. No, I, I, I'm done. Probably D Donna, I hope, is still here patient. <laughs> thank you for the talk i think you said you answered her question <laughs> oh, beautiful right beautiful Thumbs up. i love it i do too chen lei chen lei yes um arlene you know when we, you, you were mentioning um ascension and how you can ascend and descend um it's very interesting because um it is actually the topic that i was preparing 
with Janet for the next talk about transcendence, um, actually no, ascension versus descend, descending, and then how do we transcend on a more permanent level energetically. So um, I, I just wanted to acknowledge you mentioning that was just perfectly aligned with what I'm working hard at right now. <laughs> Fabulous, fabulous. I look forward to that talk. That will be in uh, June. I think in that June. will be in June. We're not having a speaker series in May because of the conference. Uh, but that I will think. be in that will be in June. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll be sharing my own transcendence on and some tools that I got to learn and uh, living with someone like you just mentioned, uh, who has the ability to live on um, beyond the veil. Uh, yes. Glenn was gifted in the way of life where he had near-death experience. So returning was a whole new dimension. And I'm so fortunate to have, um, you know, 18 years living with him, experiencing on a daily basis what it means to be living with someone like that. So, uh, and when I was going through that, I'm just a little clueless at that time, but now I'm at the level that I can appreciate and recalling mm -hmm. and, and it's quite a journey so thank you for addressing the many dimensions so now I feel like oh I can fit myself along the way what is yes. happening well, you you also yeah. may find some interesting information in William uh, David's book okay uh, because uh, I know that he has gone on and he uh, the people that he worked with are working with him, and he's now channeling. I feel that Glenn is in that space uh, of a transcendent master. Uh, and I'm going to say this, you never who know who is the master among us. Who is that being that came here to walk in a body? They may not show you they are the master, but they may be completing their last lifetime in this to be uh, in uh, out of body. So that that ten is actually a new beginning. It's what that ten is. The one is a new beginning somewhere, and the zero is potential, unrealized potential. So. Uh, we don't, I, I feel we don't ever stop growing, that we, that we have other things to do. And it will be so interesting to find out uh, what that is. Um, yeah. There's times that we need not to know because our mission at that moment is something different. Maybe our mission is to uh, not know and feel what it's like to not know, because we're here to experience. And thank you. And it's been quite an experience to be with you all. And um, I was going to say, I thought there was other um, information for me to bring. Uh, it's so important for me to see things at a different uh, vantage point, I'm going to say. And um, so when I started for you, Corky, uh, uh, going through the, the dimensions, I did the third and uh, the fifth. But uh, it's important for the sixth uh, because the, the it's for service. And UCM is about service. So all of you are in this level of serving people in some capacity. So who is the number one person that you're serving? And I'm going to to just have you think about that for a minute because it must be yourself first. It must be that lovingness for yourself. And when you, um, in this ministry of lovingness, uh, which I'm trying to capture in, uh, in writing, setting material for UCM, I'm looking at the fact that our first dimension is to open up to our own lovingness. And we can do that. We can 
use blessings. Um, I mentioned you can say, I like that, or even I want that. Now, um, Serge, when he talks, he has a little book that's called Aloha Spirit, which means love spirit. And he uh, teaches in that how to bless. And uh, he teaches bless everything that you want uh, in um and he so he goes into the different levels. One is I appreciate that. So if you can't say I love that, you can say I appreciate that. Um, if you have someone that you're having difficulty with, find something about them that you like and say I like that. And if you have a chance, verbalize to them. I had someone in the office that I just just did not get along with at all. And so I made it happen. When I went into her office, I would sit and I would look directly into her eyes. And, uh, and I had some hard truths to say to her. And so I made sure that we opened that channel. And, uh, and I said... I forgive you for being different from me under my breath. I didn't say it directly to her, but I realized that there was something within her that really irritated the heck out of me. <laughs> and when I found out, when I said that, I uh, she changed her attitude towards me. And I found that when I did this for the uh, YMCA, it was uh, uh, that I did. Uh, there were two ladies who came in. One was a VP of a bank, and the other was a flower child with a long skirt. And, <laughs> and when they looked at each other, you could just say, see, ah, uh, yeah, they just were from two different worlds. So I had the class go around to each other and look in each other's eyes. And find a quality about them that they, I don't remember if I said you don't like or like, but just find a quality and say, I forgive you for being different from me. Those two women immediately after that changed and they were on the same vibration level. So I don't know what it is that works in your life that has worked, but I feel most of you are in the teaching arena where you are teaching other people. And so maybe this will help you in uh, helping other people, but, you know, help yourself and look at what the thoughts you think within yourself that you may be feeding negativity to yourself. It may be something you heard from somebody else, or it may be like when I was in that meditation, and the first thing I said is, oh, I can't do this, because somebody else told me that I can't. And so scrutinize your own thoughts and, um, and operate on a different level of lovingness towards yourself. If you have that lovingness towards yourself, you can then be loving to other people. Does that make sense? That is such a beautiful sentiment. What you just said, Arlene, I think is an, a powerful message we need to hear repeated in all different kinds of ways because our first instinct is to not be gentle with ourselves and not be loving with ourselves. So you're hitting on a base level of spiritual development that I know I need to hear. I think especially spiritual workers, we need to hear that, don't we? Because we are called upon uh, for other people to help other people and to to bring that up. Um, one of the practices that has come into my consciousness recently is that when a person comes to me, that <clears throat> what I feel they need, I pattern back to myself. So when I pattern what I feel they need, it it enhances me and it gives me the qualities that they seem to need. Isn't that a weird thing? 
but that's the way it worked because wow it's like an infinity it, loop yes it is isn't it it's almost what's on that candle <laughs> it loops around <laughs> it really does and uh but you cannot give that what you do not have uh and we fake it so much uh, i mean it's like um, you know, love is a harmonious, reciprocal exchange. Anything less is not love. It might be a high degree of not love, but it, unless it flows harmoniously, it it is not that lovingness that needs to take place. And so that's, love is such an elusive thing, but I'm going to say it's caring for one and for for one's own self, then you can turn around and bless, and you know you don't have to say it in words. Um, less and less words for me. You know when we started to do the prayer, just holding up your hands, and when when you hold up the hands, the you can feel that energy coming out of your hands. The more I hold up my hands for somebody else, it's not even a matter of of saying a prayer. It's just, I made a commitment to do this. And to, and I, and remember always to pull it into yourself or do it into yourself first. And remember always at nighttime to go into the healing temple. We all need to go into that healing temple, because when you name it, you know, it's one thing Corky I learned from hypnosis is you tell yourself, tonight I'm going to get eight hours sleep when you only have four physical hours. I'm going to get, and when I awake, I'm refreshed, revitalized, and ready to go. And that has worked for me for years because. What you tell your body to do, it does. It does it. But if, and if you are fueling this body, then that's what the physical is about. This is our responsibility. Have you ever thought you've got a responsibility in this number one? And you bring that into, maybe bring that into the others. Maybe the thing that uh, to help you a little bit understand these levels is working with clouds. When you look at clouds and you're looking at it in the first dimension, you're going to look at it as, oh, the shape of the cloud. What is that shape? And uh, who does that look like? I used to see my teacher in the clouds on the way to uh, go to class. And so you might see, well, oh, that's a rain cloud, and you classify, that's number one. Number two, you're going to go in the metaphysical, and you may be in connection. What does that cloud say? And you may, in conversation, you know, you may even do that to a tree. Uh, you know, someone said to me, hug a tree. Well, well, I didn't need to hug the tree because, you see, I knew how to merge with the tree, but uh, I didn't argue with her. But that's what you would do in the second one. Now, in the third dimension, what would you be doing with that cloud? What's the meaning of that cloud? What does that mean to me today? So if it was kind of a rainy cloud, that might mean, hmm, today is the day for me to uh, take a nap to do something. What's the meaning? And then on four, you merge with that cloud. And I already mentioned that, uh, in merging with that cloud. The Hopi Indians in Arizona, we, Ron would often take me up there. And they, they do that with the rain cloud. You know, uh, they have just a little patch of ground. And so they'll move that rain cloud over where they need to have it and let it rain where it is. And in five... What would you do in the five? You could use it with any one of them, but it you would bring possibilities in there. This is where you would meet, let your imagination go wild. And you might combine that with whatever you're doing 
in the physical dimension uh, by saying, what does that inspire me to do? Well, it might inspire somebody, if it's a rain cloud, to invent a new raincoat or to invent something to, or uh, go put something over their flower or undo something so their flower pot gets. So it's where possibilities um, that you have not known about. What does my imagination bring me? And so you go yourself wild. In the lovingness of it, you can imagine that's a love cloud. And wherever that cloud goes, it emanates love. You might even bring that cloud into your heart and, and have that be the love that you need to have right then and there. You may bring it in for healing in the sixth dimension. And you can say, that's a healing cloud. And you know, whatever you say it is, that's what it is. That's the job. It cooperates with you. Why? Because you created it. We created this physical dimension. So everything that you see around you, you have created for some reason. Does that give you a different idea? To say, yes, I really created this. When I was preparing for this, I thought about that for myself. It's like, hmm, I think I shared with some of you that I <clears throat> I was born a twin. And my twin is much older than I. She's 15 minutes older than I. And she's so beautiful. She has this, you know, when you're looking at faces with the oval face, she has this beautiful blue eyes, and she had this gorgeous dimples. So here I am looking at this twin sister that I have. Well, you know, when I was younger, uh, oh, she also had this wavy blonde hair. Well, I had straight hair. And I couldn't, and brown eyes. I could not understand why everybody thought she was so beautiful. I mean, I know, but why did they think I bear no, Arlene looks good or anything, you know? And so by the time I got teenage, I was not wanting to be prepared uh, uh, compared to her at all. I stopped wearing twin dresses. Uh, I'd wait till she was, we were on the way to school and run back and change my dress. That's how critical it became. So one night, I had a conversation with God about it. I had this dream. And so I told God how unhappy I was with my faith. And I wanted her faith. I wanted her dimples. Well, why do you want that? Well, I want it because when people look at her, they see those beautiful dimples and it makes them smile and it makes them happy. See, I had a good reason for wanting her dimples. And <clears throat> so he said, okay, uh, you can have her dimples. You can have her face. But so it's like he presented this I said he, I don't know who he was, but it's this voice talking to me and gave me this full length mirror and said, now practice. So I practice and I practice. You know, I could not make those dimples work. And it looked awful. I was so horrified. So I said, would you give me back my face? And he said, yes. So when I awoke, now I was about 16, when I awoke, I went to the mirror and checked my face out. And sure enough, I didn't have the dimples, but I looked in every, and I had these tiny, tiny, little tiny dimples, like Shirley's dimple I had. So, oh, I actually have dimple, dimple, but I was so satisfied with my faith because, you see, I wanted people to be happy. And I thought that they were happier seeing her face. So this is one way that I can say that your dreams can help you out when you have a problem. I didn't, and she does not know to this day that I felt that way. Because we didn't, we just didn't talk about things like that. Um, but also we did all measurements and stuff like that. 
Uh, but all she knows is that I was happy and I had my problem solved in my dream state. So that's one way that you can use that dream state, that when there are things that you cannot face in life, use that dream state. Now, <clears throat> if I would use the uh, shaman, see, when, when I wrote this shaman book, this is why I love the seven, because the seven is the shaman. Shaman is an ordinary person who is a healer and is committed to do extraordinary things. That's all it takes. And you don't have to be a shaman in certain disciplines, although you can be. But it's just knowing that you have made a commitment. When you make a commitment, all things happen. I don't remember who it was, but there is a quote uh, by uh, one of the great writers that said, once you are committed, this is when things happen. Yeah. So be in touch with what it is that you are wanting to do and wanting to become. And um, you will realize it. So I think that concludes what I have to say. You are amazing. Amazing. I, Arlene, I just want to wrap around you a beautiful cloud of gratitude, of, of appreciation, and of just creating this safe place where we can have a moment where we can be together and really open up our awareness and our heart to well i all. want you all i want you all to take home with you a, a greater sense of our oneness and a greater mm. sense uh, of looking okay. at it just differently so that, yes. that it's important for us to have love and peace in our hearts. Um, it's absolutely. important for us to flourish. If you're not flourishing, then the, the, the whole group is here to assist you in your flourishing and yes. in that lovingness. We're here to grow together, aren't we? Yes. Thank you, Janet. Thank you so much. Thank you, Arlene. Thank each and every one of Thank you. Thank you so much, Arlene. Thank you. Thank you. And just know Thank that you, this Arlene. is so beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank so grateful. Thanks, yes, Arlene. Thank you, so Thank you so much. Thank you very it much. Wonderful. Thank you. It was, in, it was absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. See you in our dreams. Good night. Yes. Nice. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.